So probability can be introduced in through two ways, that is through sets and relative frequency. Okay, these are the two ways we use to introduce the probability. Okay, so uh, we have uh, the first is based on set theory and fundamental axioms. Okay, so we are using set theory and fundamental axioms. So we have discussed some axioms, you know, using them. We are defining the probability. The second way is using relative frequency. What is relative frequency? Which is based on, we are conducting particular experiment more number of times, okay. By just observing the output, we are defining the probability. That is called relative frequency, okay. So these are the two ways we use to define the probability, okay. And what is our uh, importance here is, we have to obtain the mathematical model of an experiment, okay? So to obtain the mathematical model of the experiment, what we use here, we, we are, uh, that is, so we are defining the probability by using sets and relative frequency here to obtain the mathematical model of the experiment, okay? So first we'll discuss what is experiment. So a random experiment is nothing but an action or a process that leads to one of the several possible outcomes, okay? So you are conducting one, some experiment. So it gives you some of the possible outcomes, okay? Some uh, several possible outcomes. So for example, if you are flipping a coin, flipping a coin is a experiment. So in that, what are the possible outcomes here? We are getting heads or tails, okay? Similarly, exam marks if you conduct an experiment of exam marks the marks is for exam for example exam is for 100 marks what are the outcomes we get sometimes we'll be getting value 0 to 100 any number we'll be getting okay so all these are the outcomes for the exam marks See, similarly assembly time okay we if you ask you to assemble what happens here? What is the time we'll be taking? You can take any time greater than zero seconds, okay? Okay, if I ask you to assemble at some time, you can take, you can assemble at any time greater than that particular time, okay? And similarly, the course grade. So if you find out, if you do the experiment called course grade, okay, what are the possible outcomes here? We get A, A plus, B, C, D, F like this. With, these are the possible outcomes we'll be getting for the course grade, okay? So what is an experiment? It is any physical action that can be considered as an experiment, okay? Tossing a coin, throwing or rolling a die or drawing a card from deck of 52 cards are the example for the experiment, okay? These are the example for uh, the experiment, okay? You are doing any physical action which will have some outcome that is called experiment, okay? What is sample space? So sample space is nothing but set of all possible outcomes in any experiment is called sample space, okay? How do you denote the sample space? The sample space will be denoted by yes, okay? So what is sample space? Sample space is nothing but the universal set for the experiment. So it will be containing all possible outcomes for that experiment, okay? So the sample space can be of four types. So just now we have discussed these are the experiment, no? What is the sample space for this experiment? It will be having both head and tail. These are nothing but the sample space for this particular experiment. So the value zero to 100 is the uh, sample space for this experiment like this. All possible outcomes for particular experiment is called sample space. And here we have four types of sample space. That is discrete and finite sample space, discrete and infinite sample space, continuous and finite sample space, continuous and infinite sample space, okay. What is a discrete and finite sample space? Discrete and finite sample space is nothing but, for example, if you are throwing a die, if you are throwing a die, what are the possible outcomes? We will be getting the outcome will be, we'll be getting side one, side two, side three, like that there are six sides for a die, no? So what are the possible outcomes here is one to six. So you can able to count that the outcomes, yes or no? So if you are able to count that ex uh, outcomes, then it is called discrete. 
and and it is having finite number of outcomes that is why this is called finite okay so similarly what is discrete and infinite sample space here for example getting a number getting a an integer okay so what happens here what is that here the set will be having the values from 1 2 3 so on like that infinite number of values will be having okay so here what is that we do we will be uh, so you are taking any particular number in the infinite number of numbers yes or no so that is called discrete discrete means you are able to count but it is having infinite number of samples then it is called discrete and infinite sample space what is continuous and finite sample space for example you have uh, we can able to count the number of outcomes here but it is continuous okay so for example obtaining a number by spinning the pointer on a wheel of chance number from 0 to 12 is the example for continuous samples continuous and finite sample space what is that here we have wheel of chance so you, if you go to a gaming uh, place there will be having wheel of chance if you spin this okay say the numbers on this wheel is 1 to 12 these are the numbers on the wheel okay when you spin this okay what is here we have continuous values and number of samples are also finite okay so that is the example for continuous and finite sample space what is continuous and infinite sample space here for example prediction or analysis of random signals okay you cannot predict the random signals okay and we can also cannot analyze the random signal so prediction and analysis of random signal is the example for continuous and infinite sample space okay so these are the four sample space discrete and finite means you can able to count number of samples discrete and infinite means what it is uncountable there is one to one correspondence between the samples then it is called discrete and infinite continuous means what you cannot have one to one correspondence so then it is called continuous and finite means it is having finite number of values so it is continuous and finite sample space continuous and infinite sample space these are the four types of sample space so here we see some examples for example software errors okay so when you conduct the number of experiments on the software okay so what are what happens what are the different types of errors how many errors we get zero error one error two errors three errors so on like this we'll be getting the errors yes or no this is nothing but the sample space yes okay what type of uh, sample space it is it is countable there is one to one correspondence no so it is called discrete and here it is infinite number of errors there are infinite number of errors so what type of sample space it is discrete and infinite sample space okay and check here we have a power plant okay so the manager uh, supervises the power operation of three power plants at any given time each of the three can be classified as either generating electricity or being ideal okay so if a power plant is generating electricity we will be assigning value one when it is ideal it is not generating any electricity then we assign the value zero then what is the sample space here now first case no power plant is generating electricity so all the three power plants outcome will be zero okay now here the first power plant is generating electricity other two are ideal so it is zero zero one like this zero one zero zero one one okay here in this case two power plants are generating electricity and in this case the last power plant is generating electricity the other two are not generating electricity like this these are the different combinations we will be getting okay what type of example here it is you can count no this is one two three there is one to one correspondence then it is called discrete okay and you can and there are only finite number of samples so what type of sample space it is discrete and finite sample space okay
And see here in the game of chance. In the game of chance, here game of chance is nothing but um, these are the uh, tossing a coin, rolling a die, okay, and drawing a card from deck of fifty-two cards, okay. So this is called the examples of game of the chance, okay. So these are the three examples. What are those? To tossing a coin, rolling a die, or use of pack of cards these are the three examples for game of chance okay now for example if you roll a die so usually if you roll a die what are the possible outcomes here s value is 1 2 3 4 5 6 yes or no six outcomes will be having now if you roll two dice if you roll two dice then what are the possible outcomes here it is like this it is having the values 1 1 1 2 1 3 one four because first die is having value one, second die is also having value one, first die is having value one, second die is having value two, like this. Okay, these are the different combinations we'll be getting. So how many elements we have? One, one, two, six, six. There are thirty-six outcomes we will be having. Okay, so uh, if you, it is also countable, there is one-to-one -one correspondence between the outcomes. Okay, and uh, there are a finite number of outcomes. So this is also discrete and finite sample space. This is also example for discrete and finite sample space. Okay. Okay. Now what is sample space? The sample space is nothing but li list of exhaustive. Okay. Don't leave anything out and mutually exclusive outcomes. Okay. Is called the sample space and is denoted by yes means what a sample space is nothing but we are considering all the outcomes of an experiment that is called sample space now the outcomes are denoted as o1 o2 so on okay okay what is yes yes will be having all the outcomes o1 o2 so on okay all outcomes it will be having okay that is called sample space okay so uh, if the sample space S is given as O1, O2, so on, OK, the probabilities assigned to the outcomes must satisfy this requirement. What are the um, uh, probabilities assigned to this outcome should satisfy here? The first probability is probability of any particular outcome should have the value between 0 and 1. Probability of any particular outcome will be having the value between 0 and 1. Okay, now if you add the probability of individual outcomes, how, what are the outcomes you have? O1, O2, so on, O K, sir, no. If you add all the probabilities of all the outcomes, it should give value 1. Okay, so probability of O1 plus probability of O2 plus so on, probability of O K. Okay, it will give, what is that? The 1, okay. Then the probability, set of probability values for an experiment with the sample space S is equal to O1, O2, so on, ON. Okay, just now we have discussed, no, what are the probabilities for each outcome here? So for pro outcome 1, what is the probability? P1, for outcome 2, probability is P2, so on, for pro outcome ON, what is the probability is PN? Just now we have discussed that. What is that? Any particular probability should have the value between 0 and 1. P1 should have the value between 0 and 1. P2 should also have the value between 0 and 1. So on, Pn should also have the value between 0 and 1. Just now we have discussed that. If you add all the probabilities, what is its value? If you add all the probabilities, its value should be equal to 1. Okay. So probability of outcome OI occurring is said to be PI, okay, and is written as P of OI. Probability of outcome OI is, how do you write? PI, okay. PI is, what is that? Probability of uh, getting outcome OI, 